we're trying to. Yeah. So we're we're talking about the biblical feasts today. Um, we've we've heard about them. We've read about them in Scripture. Uh, we open the Bible and we we read these passages that tell us these things we're supposed to celebrate. And as Christians, a lot of times we don't. You know, we, we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate Easter, we celebrate birthdays, and, you know, All some the of these other holidays. hallmark holidays. Yeah. But before we get too far in that, I want to read Colossians 2.16. It says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of a holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days. Mm. Let no man judge you. Now, let no man judge you. So, what day is a holy day to you? What do you eat? What do you drink? Do you celebrate the new moon? Do you celebrate the Sabbath? I think it says let no man judge you because maybe only God can judge us in regards to this. I have to admit, I have probably failed God in this way. Um, I don't believe I honor the Sabbath in the way I should. I don't believe I worship these holy days in the way I should. Growing up, I thought, oh, those are Jewish feasts. That's for the Jewish people. Not for me. I'm, you know, I'm a Gentile. I'm a Christian. Uh, I mean, in the Bible, you're either Jew or Gentile. Gentile is pretty much everyone who's not a Jew. So some people dismiss it that way and say, well, that's, that's not for me. Um, but I think it's very important because after Christ returns, you can read in Zechariah 14 that if you don't go up and worship the Lord on the Feast of the Tabernacles, you won't get rain. We're, we're told to go up and worship the Lord. And all of this comes mostly from Leviticus 23. In fact, I may read a lot of Leviticus 23. <clears throat> it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. There it is, children of Israel. And say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be a holy convocation, even these are my feasts. Every time it speaks of a feast, it talks about it being a holy convocation. Now, this is like a sacred assembly. This is a gathering together of the saints. Worshiping the Lord. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. A holy convocation. There's that phrase again. Holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their seasons. These holy convocations, these are gathering together. This is this is a holy convocation right here. Mm -hmm. Gathering together to worship the Lord. Um, the, the Greek word or the Hebrew word used here is mitzah and it's always followed with the word that means holy it's more than just going to church it's a sacred gathering in the 14th day of the first month that even is the lord's passover and on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of the unleavened bread unto the lord seven days you must eat unleavened bread in the first day you shall have a holy convocation you shall do no servile work therein but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. The Lord spake to Moses again, saying, Say unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When you be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest therein, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest into the priests. First fruit, that's another one of the feasts. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. And you shall offer that day when you wave the sheaf, a he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. A lamb without blemish. This is a, a foretaste of Christ. Um, I mean, Christ is our Passover, the New Testament tells us. And this, this is leading them to Christ. Jesus is in all the feasts. He's in all of them. And I think as Christians, 
if we want to get to know the Lord better, we should study these feasts. We should look into them and see if we can celebrate them in the way we're supposed to. He goes on to say, and you shall eat neither bread nor parched corn nor green ears until the selfsame day you've brought an offering unto your God. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. And you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheep of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. So it's going to be 50 days, 50 days from one to the other. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, shall you number 50 days, and you shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. You shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two-tenth deals. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be baked with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. As you read Leviticus 23, it goes through most of these, most of these feasts. I'm not going to read it all because it's, you know, some 48 <laughs> verses. But you can read all about it right here. And God is commanding his people to do this. He's commanding them. This isn't a suggestion. Hey, you know, if y'all feel like it, you can do this. He's telling them how to live, how to worship. Um, the Feast of Tabernacles, down in verse 34, speaking to the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day, you shall be a holy convocation unto you. And you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It's a solemn assembly. You shall do no work. These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations. It uses this phrase multiple times in, in Leviticus 23, these holy convocations. In verse 38, it says, Beside the Sabbaths of the Lord, and beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offerings which you give unto the Lord. Um, it goes on to talk about the booths. You know, when in Matthew 17, when Peter, James, and John were with Christ on the temp on the on the mount when he transfigured before them. And Moses and Elijah appeared. Peter said, do you want me to build booths for everybody? Because that was that was the Feast of Tabernacles. And there were these other two. And, you know, Jesus pretty much said, no, we don't need to do that. But that's why Peter said that. Do you want me to build booths? Because that's what day that was. I think the Feast of Trumpets is going to be the day that Christ returns. Um, and even when Jesus said no one knows the day or the hour because the Feast of Trumpets is never on the same day. It's not like, oh, September 14th. It changes. It can be a different date within September and October, depending on the moon, because they go by the Jewish calendar, which is a lunar calendar. So that's, that's why it changes all the time. But as Christians, we're grafted in, right? We're grafted in through Christ. We are brought in through Jesus. In Romans 11, starting in verse 11, it, it's, I believe, kind of explaining this. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles how much more their fullness for I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am an apostle of the Gentiles I magnify my office if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them for if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead for if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partake of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root. But the root, thee, thou wilt say the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Hmm. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. 
We're grafted in through Christ. Jesus is the root of David. He is the branch. Uh, it's because of Christ that we can do this. When Jesus died on the cross and we've accepted him as Lord and Savior, we accept his sacrifice as the only thing necessary for our salvation, we're grafted into the family. Uh, it doesn't make us Jews. It doesn't make us Hebrews or Israelites. There are some who say, oh, well, you know, uh, the Jews are no longer, you know, the church has replaced the Israelites, which is incorrect. We haven't replaced them. We're of a different covenant, a new covenant. They were of the old covenant. Christ is the new covenant. Uh, most of the Jewish people are still under the law of Moses, but we're under the grace of Christ. Uh, does that mean we don't keep the law? Does it mean we don't observe these feasts because we're not Jewish, we're not Hebrews, we're not Israelites? I think it's important that we recognize these, that we worship the Lord. We were made to worship. Here's all these feasts that are ways for us to worship. Now, we don't kill animals and spill their blood thinking that's going to save us. It doesn't forgive our sins. This was a precursor. This was a foreshadow of Christ. Uh, Leviticus 17.11 says it's the blood that makes atonement for sins. And I have provided it to you on the altar of the Lord. It's the blood. It's not the blood of a ram or a lamb or a dove that cleanses me of sin. It's the blood of Christ. And only the blood of Christ that cleanses us of sin. That washes us clean. That allows us to be born again. It's only through the blood of Christ. The Sabbath is spoken of a lot. Exodus 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it that thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that's within the gates. Your cattle aren't supposed to work. Hey, you guys stop that out there. Stop that work. I see you over there. For in the six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. I understand for the Jewish people it is Saturday. It starts Friday evening at sundown. They measure their days from evening to evening. So Friday at sundown, if you're in Jerusalem, everything shuts down. You can't go out and eat. You can't find a place to go have a drink. It's closed all day Saturday. Now, if you go to Tel Aviv, yeah, everything's open in Tel Aviv, but in Jerusalem, they follow this to the letter. Shabbat. The Sabbath. Shabbat is what it's called. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shabbat, Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Yeah, Shabbat Shalom. Um, I feel I fail the Lord in this. Many times I work on what I consider the Sabbath. I've always considered Sunday to be the Sabbath for me. Um, but I, I fail in this area. Um, I think we all do. I pray for forgiveness in that. Uh, I've had so many jobs over the years that required me to work on Sunday and off to work I'd go. Um, but Christ is the Lord of the Sabbath. Matthew 12, verse 8, For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. This was Jesus speaking these. He is the Son of Man, referred to himself as that. In many places, Jesus was 100% man, but 100% God. And I think as Christians, as followers of Christ, we need to maybe reevaluate what we celebrate, the things we hold important, the things we think we're supposed to do. Um, now the angels were celebrating when Christ was born. Sure, we celebrate his birth, even though it wasn't December 25th, it was more likely probably the Feast of Tabernacles or somewhere, or Feast of Trumpets, more likely in September. I mean, it says the shepherds were out in the field. They're typically not going to be out in the field in late December. It's really cold, just like it is here. Um, so, how do we do this? How do we celebrate these? I, I think we're going to talk about these feasts probably for the next several weeks, and it coincides with our Bible study. You know, so... We'll kind of talk about it a little bit here, but we're going to study it on Wednesdays when we have our Bible study and really go in depth and see what we can do, see how we can change how we live, 
see if we can draw nearer to the Lord by getting to know him better. I mean, how do you get to know friends? You spend time with them, right? You, you talk with them. You do things with them. In the same way, I think we need to get to know Jesus better. And here's, I think, a great way to do it through these feasts and see if we can't honor him in the same way and try to learn more about him. I mean, we need to humbly submit ourselves every day and let let the potter mold us and make us and shape us more and more into the image of Christ until the day we stand before him. So it would be my prayer that we would learn how to follow these not that we're worshiping the feasts themselves, but that we're worshiping God in the way he told us to through these feasts. And I think it's something we all need to learn and not put it off anymore as, oh, that was for the Jews. That was for the Israelites. That was for the Hebrews. Um, we are children of God through Jesus Christ. We are God's creation. Some people like to say, oh, we're all God's children. But that's not biblically true. Only those who know Christ as Lord and Savior can be called children of God. We're all God's creation, yes. But only those who have called Jesus Lord and Savior can be called children of God. So let's start changing some things in our lives. Let's start honoring the Sabbath. Let's start worshiping the Lord in these feasts and see if we can't get to know our Savior even more because I think I think we're told to do so Heavenly Father I thank you for this day Lord I thank you for your word I pray God that you will help us to worship you correctly I pray that you will guide us in our efforts to give you the glory, to bring the praise and the honor and glory that is only due to you. Father, help us to know how to celebrate these feasts as followers of Christ. Help us as we seek to know you better, Lord. Help us as we seek to serve you better. Guide us in all that we do, that we may serve you and worship you correctly and the way in which you've called us to. I pray for your guidance, your wisdom, your discernment, and your grace as we seek to learn more about you and serve you in greater ways. Thank you, Lord, for all that are hearing this. I pray you forgive us of our sins. Forgive us for not honoring your Sabbath. Forgive us where we failed you. And I thank you and I praise you Jesus for what you've done for us for loving us so much that you laid down your life that we might have everlasting life and it is in Jesus name we pray Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen Amen